Hey there. So this morning I got an email asking if I would help clarify how to recognize a false convert. Um, and I'm not sure what the background is. There wasn't a lot of information. Um, they just asked if I'd do a video about it. What I felt led to stress is what's important is not recognizing so much a true or false convert but being able to discern the gospel. Once you've got the gospel right, then you've got a position to be able to determine who is in the faith and who's not in the faith. And even Paul said, test yourself to see whether or not you're in the faith. Um, or do you not know Jesus Christ lives in you? And what he's saying there, when you say in the faith, he's saying, test yourselves to see if you actually believe the gospel. So it's not, there's something, there's not something mystical about being in the faith. It just means, what do you believe? Do you believe the gospel? And the gospel is the message that saves us. The gospel is a message about the person and work of Christ. And we know it's in 1 Corinthians 15, um, 1 through 4, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures and rose for our justification according to the scriptures and he was seen by men he's alive today and when it says according to the scriptures that implies some understanding that he we we there is a little that there is a basic understanding you know it doesn't mean you have to be a bible expert but we know that he's the son of god he is god in the flesh he came and died for my sins because i couldn't pay the price the law condemned me to death god's judgment uh, according to god's judgment i was condemned and an heir of wrath you know and he is the one who made peace for me because i could not and there's no work that I could ever do that could merit justification um, to be able to stand in God's presence. I'm a sinner and I am condemned. And yet Jesus died for my sins. And his death was sufficient. His blood was offered up to God and suffices and satisfied God and satisfied the claims of God's wrath, satisfied justice and now God can righteously forgive me. And Jesus rose from the dead, which proves that I've been justified. He was in my place. He is my substitute. If his, he was standing in my sins, and if his offering had not um, paid the price, then he wouldn't have been raised from the dead. <laughs> so now that's more than you need to understand. I mean, that's like, uh, that's like, after you've been around the gospel for a little while, that you can say something like that. But the gist of it is, it's not of works. It's of it's he who believes on him who justifies the ungodly, though he works not. His faith is counted to him as righteousness, and Jesus did it all. I am a sinner uh, without a plea, save the Jesus, that Jesus died for me, right? This is it. That's it. And there's... Uh, it, that is the message that truth is the message that saves you and first john 5 says that he who believes god's record concerning his son has the record or the witness in himself and it's the spirit that testifies and he's born of god he that believes god's record concerning his son is born of god and the evidence that he's born of god is that he has the testimony. So that's 1 John 5, if you want to look that up. Um, so, how do I know if someone is a believer or not? Well, the only way I can know is based on what they say they believe. So there's a profession that goes with it that is not for, their, uh, not for them to be justified before God, but so that I can know someone's saved. If I, if you can't tell me what you believe, you may very well be saved, but have problems being able to articulate what you believe. And therefore I don't know how to know if you're saved. If I, if you say, well, he's a very good person. He's very nice. He goes to church all the time and he 
tithes and he reads his Bible, that does not necessarily mean he's saved. Because Jehovah's Witnesses do that, and many other people who believe wrongly about Jesus Christ, who do not have the testimony, who are not born of God, who do not have the Spirit in them bearing record of God's testimony concerning his Son, that he died for our sins according to the Scriptures and rose from the dead for our justification according to the Scriptures. So they won't be able to reach right conclusions that are scriptural about the Son, Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, in many churches today, we don't even get to talk about Jesus. You know, I don't go to churches anymore, but you don't even get to talk about Jesus Christ. You didn't know what the guy next to you believed. You assumed he was a Christian. And we've been taught to assume everybody's a Christian who shows up at church, you know. And it turns out that many, many, many people cannot uh, come to correct conclusions about Jesus Christ that are scriptural. They can't arrive at it because there's a spirit of error operating in them. The spirit of truth doesn't bear witness and lead them into all truth concerning the Son. They're always off. That is an evidence that there's a, may possibly a false conversion or not a conversion. Not the behavior. Because a genuine believer who is saved has the testimony and believes rightly about Jesus Christ um, can fall into all kinds of sin if they're still growing in knowing that their own sins are forgiven. Because we know that Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture, but then there's another exercise of faith. Not another exercise of faith, but there's a growth in faith to realize he died for my sins, and that means I can come to him and receive from him and be for and know that I'm forgiven and know that there's no condemnation and therefore I can walk in the light. I'm qualified to be in his presence. His presence is the only thing that ha has the power to keep me from falling into sin. And if I'm in condemnation, even though I correctly believe the gospel and have the witness of the spirit, but I'm still struggling to believe that he actually, you know, love me. Like for me, uh, I grew up in a very abusive environment and I was adopted and I had identity issues and I never knew I, I didn't have a father figure. And so I, it was very difficult for me to personally embrace. I had all kinds of shame that, so it was difficult for me to personally embrace that Jesus actually receives me. I had to work really hard to speak the scriptures to myself and fight the fight of faith to say, I know I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm born of God. I'm a member of the household of God. I'm not an orphan. I'm not a stranger. I'm not alone. I'm not a leper. I'm not alienated. And yet I couldn't deny that Jesus had died for my sins and rose from the dead, even though I went through that struggle. And while I was in that struggle, it was easy for sin to reign over me, because if you cannot boldly stand in God's presence and boldly come to the throne of grace, and you shrink back in shame all the time, and you're just fighting to try to establish a ground to stand on, then you're weak, and you'll never live a, uh, any kind of victory in your Christian life, and sin will be your master. And during those times, false converts will say you're not saved. <laughs> So in the church, you know, you got all kinds of sin. Meanwhile, you're going through the real struggle saying, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, and going home justified, even though you still feel wretched. Meanwhile, the false convert next to you who's tithing all the time and pr prays long prayers and is always faithful at church and doesn't have a lot of outward sin in his life is looking at you and saying, God, thanks. I I'm not like that person. Thank you, I am not like him. Well, what does that show you? Who believes the gospel? You know, the false con convert is the one that can't believe the gospel, uh, that does not believe the gospel. And the way you know he doesn't believe the gospel is because he can't apply it to anybody. He may think he's saved, okay? Of course he's saved because he's so good. And yet, if you say, no, Jesus died for that guy next to you who's struggling, he'll say, 
No, I, I, he is, he needs to clean himself up or Jesus is going to throw him in the lake of fire. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you to that guy. Now I'm saved, but he's going to say, well, how do you know that? Well, because look at him, look at what he does. You can't do that and say you're saved. See, that's a false convert. And that is a person who's taken the way of Cain. According to first John, the one who hates his brother is the one who is like Cain, who uh, rejects the testimony of Abel. Abel only has the testimony that he's righteous um, because he offered blood. There's nothing said about Abel other than he offered up the blood. He became a shepherd and offered the firstling of his flock, and therefore he was considered righteous. He, he was righteous by what he believed, and he moved in his faith. And because of that, Cain hated him and killed him. The false convert in 1 John, who's also an antichrist, is the one who's gone the way of Cain and cannot recognize an Abel. You know, maybe Abel was, we don't know anything about Abel. He could have been a very upstanding person, or he could have been a loose, you know, person who, who was lazy and couldn't get it together, and all he did was shepherd while Cain was out there working in the field, you know. And Cain just, rep, re, re, Cain just uh, resented him because of how lazy he was. We don't know what Cain's feeling was or how long it was brewing, but we do know that Cain rejected the way that God had chosen to justify man, which is through believing the testimony, believing in the record concerning his son, the death and resurrection of Christ, the gospel message. That was the gospel at that time concerning the seed of the woman, and it had something to do with blood. You know, I got to become a shepherd and offer the firstling of the flock and on this altar, and that's how God will accept me. Not from my works from the toil of the ground. You know, I've talked about this quite a bit, actually. Um, but a false convert is manifested when they reject someone's testimony and insist uh, on behavior as the litmus test as to whether someone's righteous. Righteousness, when John talks about, you know, he who practices righteous is righteous the righteousness he's talking about practicing is the righteousness of abel and that was the offering which abel had which if we believe in the blood of jesus christ then we know that god won't accept any other offering other than christ himself and so our faith is our offering we we approach god with the blood of jesus nothing else never our own righteousness never our own works and the false convert is is manifested when he hates the Abels, you know, um, and he's the one that's walking in darkness. He's the one who thinks he has no sin. He's the one who thinks he knows God. He's the one who thinks he loves God. And yet he rejects God's way of justifying people and therefore ends up hating Abel. He's the Pharisee and Abel just has the blood, you know, um, so that's, that's how I would say it is. It's not so important that you learn to recognize whether or not I'm a false convert. First, you need to recognize whether you believe the gospel. And then once you know the gospel, listen to my testimony and you tell me if I'm a believer or not. I cannot say that someone who has the testimony of Jesus Christ is not a believer. I can say he's in the flesh. I can say he's going to be disciplined. I can say he needs to be kicked out of the church and don't have fellowship with him because he's walking in, he's practicing sin. You know, there's, there are consequences um, regarding the fellowship and everything like that. But I can't say he's not a child of God. I, if he has the testimony, I have to say, well, I believe that person's born of God. Now, God ultimately only knows. He can tell, he knows if somebody really believes or just says they believe. But what we've been given to go by is the testimony. That's, that's all we have to get, go by. You know, if someone can consistently profess Jesus Christ and rightly arrive at conclusions that are scriptural, about the work, person and work of Jesus Christ, um, that the, only the Spirit can bear witness to that. So, uh, you know, it's not just someone who says, oh, I believe in Jesus. 
or someone who goes to church. It's someone who understands the death of Jesus according to the scriptures and his resurrection according to the scriptures, which means that there is some scriptural knowledge. Now, how much scriptural knowledge? Not a lot. You know, the baseline is uh, just look to him and be saved. You know, recognize that you need salvation. And God knows when the transaction actually happens. But then going forward, you will be able to increasingly testify who Jesus is. Even in your lowest place, if I were to interview you when you're... Who knows what you got yourself into because you're in all this condemnation... If I were to interview about who the who Jesus Christ is, you wouldn't deny that he's the Son of God. You wouldn't deny that he died for your sins. You wouldn't deny that he rose from, your de- from the dead. You might say, well, I don't know if I'm really forgiven. I might have out-sinned God. But if I said, yeah, but do you believe that Jesus is raised from the dead after he died for your sins? You'd have to say yes. Why? Because you can't deny the witness of the Spirit. And that's what saves you. Then you grow in the faith, you grow in your confidence, you grow in the assurance that that really does cover you. But one thing that happens is when we think that it doesn't cover that guy over there who clearly has the testimony, but he's struggling in all kinds of sin and stuff, we block our ability to believe for ourselves. And that's why a lot of people stay weak and stay in condemnation is because they can't, um, they uh, can't apply the gospel to people. And it's very difficult to apply it to yourself when you're not applying it to other people. (laughs) So, um, okay, well that, and, and I've got some, if I've got some teachings on first John, if you go through my, if you do a search, you can look for, uh, just look for first John. I think I've got a, not a playlist, but different messages. I should put them in a playlist, um, about how to recognize the cane versus, um, Yeah, really, it's about recognizing Cain and Abel. (laughs) Um, Okay, well, take care.